So Aaron Swartz's funeral happened uh, just a couple of days ago, and uh, of course he's a 26-year-old activist uh, who was one of the co-founders of Reddit, uh, and at the age of 14 he was one of the people that built the RSS feed. It's amazing. I saw a young picture of him with Professor Larry Lessig. He's like, just like he's such a young kid, and he's having a conversation with one of the smartest guys in the country. Uh, you know, an amazing guy. Wound up being one of the co-founders of Progressive Change Campaign Committees, worked on all these different causes. I interviewed him here on the Young Turks three years ago, and he said, look, I, you know, I got lucky, I got a little bit of money from Reddit, and I just want to use it to help people. And, of course, the government came after him and drained him of all that money, uh, and that was part of why he was despondent. Why did they do that? Well, he violated a term of service uh, with a company called JSTOR that has academic articles. How could you? And we've gone over this before, violating a terms of service should be a contractual issue between two private parties. By the way, JSTOR did not press criminal or civil charges against Aaron Swartz. They didn't even care. They thought the government should drop the case. But the government uh, pursued it to, uh, to its bitter end anyway. And Aaron despondent, having lost all his money and facing up to, I've seen in the news reports, 35 to 50 years in jail. Just take the lower number for now, take 35 years. And then now, of course, uh, the prosecutor's husband sent out a tweet, Carmen Ortiz uh, is the prosecutor, and, and the husband sends out a tweet saying, oh, people aren't even mentioning that we offered him a six month sentence instead. Why aren't they talking about that? Oh, are you not merciful? You were gonna convict him, have him plead guilty to 13 felony counts, which he can never get off his record, and spend six months in prison for violating a term of service agreement that the private company that he violated with doesn't even give a damn about. MIT did pursue charges because he went into a closet and plugged into somewhere he shouldn't have plugged into. Look, I don't know if Aaron should have done that. I don't know the veracity of those charges. I don't know what would have happened in court. I do know that there's no way in the world that merits 35 years in jail or even six months in jail and 13 felony counts. And so when they had his funeral, his father said, quote, he was killed by the government, and MIT betrayed all of its basic principles. Now look, those are strong words, but if my son had just died because of a malicious government prosecution, I'd be just as angry, maybe more so. So he's allowed to say whatever he wants. They just buried his son in Chicago. God, every time I think about it, it makes me sick. They also said, this is from Swartz family, the death was the product of a criminal justice system rife with intimidation and prosecutorial overreach. And that is totally true. And so why did they do that overreach? Well, there's a reason behind it. Because they can't control people like Swartz. They think, look, we have all the weapons, we have all the information. You're not allowed to have any of them. Don Rumsfeld used to call that asymmetry. We have asymmetry of power. In other words, I have all of it and you have none of it. So when someone like WikiLeaks or Schwartz comes out and says, hey, you know what, I got this information, in this case, academic articles. Nobody was making a dime, nobody was gonna make a dime off of his releases. And now, by the way, professors on their own as a tribute to Aaron are releasing those same academic articles for free. So he said, I, I think the public should have that information. It's important base of knowledge. How dare you? We're gonna send you away for decades. We're gonna drain your entire fortune. We're gonna put felony counts on your record. I mean, if you're a guy like this, imagine spending six months in jail. No, no, and then, they're, and, but the thing that drives me crazy is that they're like proud of it. Like, what, what, are we not merciful? We were just gonna put him in jail for six months and destroy his life and take all his money. What's the big deal? Larry Lessig was at his funeral and spoke, and uh, Tim Berners-Lee, who was the guy who actually developed the World Wide Web. He was at the funeral as well. And he said, quote, we felt the indictment was nonsense and that he would be acquitted. And in fact, it turns out the government did not get a warrant for his laptop for 34 days. The case probably would have been thrown out. But they're not interested in proving their case. What they're interested in is intimidating you. And what they wanted to do was make an example out of Aaron Swartz that if you defy the government in any way, shape, or form, if you try to share information that we're not in favor of, remember Bradley Manning, remember Aaron Swartz, this is what the government will do to you. Now what they've forgotten is that you're supposed to be our government. 
you're supposed to represent the people. The politicians are called representatives. But now they're in the business, of course, of protecting the powerful and crushing anyone who defies them and actually wants to share information with the public. We have lost our government in a tragic way. We need to gain it back.